Okay, so this is part 1B of the workflow series here. And part 1A is just the macro discussing how it works. Um, you can download the image J macro or the Python J from macro from description in this one or from that one. And move on to part 2 if you want to and skip this part. This is going to be slightly slower, more involved on how I would make a macro from scratch and the thought process and the way in which I kind of get to the functions that I need. I don't do it often, so it's uh, it's generally a process for me, and maybe that process will help you if you're going to write a macro. So I have an image that's open, and the goal here is we want to save a TIFF from channel 1. Um, and so first thing you have to do is go for dev and record. It also lives in plugins macro record as well. So we want to make sure we've got a record up. From last time I was playing around with the Python JFUN and that can be semi-accessed with some of the Java functions when you're recording that way. So I'm going to change that to just be a normal macro and record an image J macro for this time. We'll touch on that Python JFUN at the end. And then so what I want to do is take this one and duplicate out just the first channel. There's other ways you can do this and, and, and split the channels and things like that. And I find, depending on what you're doing, duplicate is normally my go-to. So I'm going to duplicate. Um, I'm going to leave this part in, but pick the channel I want. This is especially useful if you want channel two. If you want just the first channel, that's fine. You can just unclick and it will do the first channel. And so we'll go ahead and do that one. That's going to duplicate the channel there. Um, and then we want to save that as a TIFF. And we go ahead and do save as TIFF. And then it's going to save it as a TIFF. Um, uh, we don't need to worry about the file name for now because we're going to play around with the file names in a moment. And we can see we've got this 8 megabyte TIFF. And we drag it and drop back on just to make sure it went as we plan. as planned. That's good. And, and so that's, that's the end result. And the question is now how do we get that into a loop? And how do we do all of the things in this particular folder? So we'll hit Create. Uh, and it creates an ImageJ macro. We'll save as, um, just always good practice, and I've got a few kind of spares in there, but just to call this was um, practice. Uh, and it will put on just image J macro on the end, and make sure we always put that on, otherwise it's gonna save a blank file. No, it doesn't save typically on the first go around. It looks like it isn't saved, but if you just move around, you'll see that the name properly saves. The asterisk indicates that it hasn't been saved yet. Hit Control S, it will make sure it's saved there. So we've got the duplicate channels, uh, we've got save as TIFF, um, and then we opened it, we don't want that, and we've got select window, and we don't want that. So we're actually going to get rid of all of that. These are the two key things that we actually want, and the rest of it is about figuring out how to make that into a loop. So um, the best place to go to is to go to help and macro functions, and bring it up there, and there's a there's a long list of functions in here. And so. To some degree, you have to, you know, search around to find things. And so, if you were looking for like opening uh, a directory to get the files out, so let's just find directory, um, directory in this one, and look through the different options for directory. You can see down the side here when it's yellow, see what sorts an option here. Um, file functions. Uh, there's another cluster down here. Get directory. So I think that one is there. There is also a file function in file dot directory. That's a little bit more involved. And if you just get directory, that's the one we want. There are some really cool little macros. If you click on that one, this is a good way to look at how it's applied in different places. But we're going to use just get directory and minimize that. And so to start with, um, always use the comments and put in your name and the date that it was made. Um, and then you should put in a description of what it does. Description. That um, and so a minimum you should put some sort of comments in or something so you don't just come back to it blind. I mean, what did, what did I write this for? Um, okay, so we're gonna get directory and we're gonna put that into a variable called dir equals get get and it's directory and it's got a nice auto complete here. Um, and there's lots of different things where it automatically suggests these things, but we're actually just going to go over the string here, and it gives you some instructions on the right hand side about how it's going to be used. So, this is the string that goes in the dialog, um, essentially, just select folder. Um, and that will get the directory and put that into the, the parameter. Then we're going to have a file list, um, and I don't remember the function for now, but I think it's. Um, make list something like that again we're going to go back to our, our macro functions and we're going to look for uh, list uh, get file it actually 
it's a good place to start with this get directory because it, it links us to this also see also file functions get file list these are things we can we can look at um and list files recursive recursively will be another good place i think instantly let's go there and have a look um so this is the one we want get file list from the directory so that's the one we're going to use and you can probably just start here you can copy this out and let's take that with us we're not going to use all of all of the parts in there but we're going to keep track of that one we're going to use these functions so um, get file list is one we would want. I don't want you to just do it. And so it's going to create that into a list. Um, and it's also got a for, a for loop in there. Um, we can get rid of that. And if you select all and then shift and tab, it will take it all the way back to the end. And you can neaten that up in a moment. And so that bit we're going to put up here. And this part in here, we're going to tab that in. And in this part in here, we're going to tab it in again. Like that. Um, I believe that one actually needs to come back. Um, we're not going to use this exact inside here. Um, I think this is if ends with. So list i is going to be the, the ith um, item in that directory. Um, so what it's going to do here is going to look for a folder if it ends with this as a like a folder path would then it's going to jump in and get some more and recursively go through so we're not going to worry about that bit we're not too worried about that part and listing more files we're actually going to change this to if it ends with dot um nd2 then we can go ahead and run that if it ends dot nd2 we're happy um we need another bracket in there to match things up. And if you select the bracket, you'll see it will select the next one down. We need these squiggly brackets to make a, a group that's going to work with. So if, if it ends with ND2, then we're great. Otherwise, just ignore it and move on. And so then, okay, so then we, these are the things we need to do in a loop. We're going to put those in, um, tab that over. And so the next part is all going to be about strings um, and handling the files and bringing in the files and getting them out so you might realize right now we're kind of stuck because we may not have the files open and how are we going to get them open and make sure we've got the right one in place so i'm just going to save that for completeness um, and one thing there's a little bit of a um, trial and error is making sure you get using bio formats to get into the recorder so you know what the function is if i take this one drop it on um, it opens bio formats window opens the image it doesn't give me any record um, if you go to plugins and bio formats um, you can use the importer to open it up uh, and do it that way let's open up one up there and click OK and that will drop it into this one here and so this is the bio formats importer it's going to be a file name we can use this to chop and change with the strings one thing um, I typically do is do file uh, by formats importer but windowless importer that allows it to just open without popping up that window saying which settings you want to pick so we can use our windowless importer instead and then we're going to see as a very slightly different it's going to include windowless in the name there um, but we're going to kind of mix and match between the two because we can we can make sure that it opens up in the same way what will happen is if you open up a file using the normal window for importing and change one of the settings let's say um, split channels if you then go and just run windowless importer it will use the previous channels as you did before and so i'm going to kind of use the parameters from the importer but put it into windowless importer and that i've just done it over time and it's taken me a while to figure that out so that one i guess is just one of those things and so we're going to take these two and include those for opening up our files and put them in there um, and by the way I normally just set uh, wrap lines if you haven't already that's that's always good to see um, so my way of doing things is to always just is always just create a string that goes into bio formats or whatever it is you create a string and then put it in where this long pink string is here there's a long string that runs all the way across this lot so you're going to chop and change that up into something that using the variables so we just call it by format string um, and then equals and this is just essentially how I make my macros over and again we'll cut that off put that here um, and then add the co semicolon on the end then we're going to put by format string in here right um, so now we've got to do is make the string for the file list and the, the file that we have pulling pulling in from the list we don't want this particular one 
we want to change that there so we're going to take this bit out um, and put in two speech marks to kind of put it together and then in the gap in between um, we're going to put in a space and a plus and a plus again so in between there we're going to put in our what we call path string in the, in the other other example right okay so now we want to make the path string which is the pointing to the file we want to open that's going to be the directory um, what we selected plus the uh, list i uh, a good thing to note here that i've called mine file list and in the example they call it list so i'm going to make sure i check that and that's going to come up in an error if you if you don't so this is one of the things you will keep an eye on and when you're chopping and changing and making it as you go along um file list file list this is the length that's, that's how far it will run um all the way through the list and then for each one if it ends with nd2 it's going to create this path string the path string is going to go into here uh, if you look at this this string for the bioform it's important because it's, there's a lot of things like the region of interest manager we don't care about that part you can get rid of that kind of trim it down color mode default we don't really care too much we're not really looking at the lookup tables um and the hyperstack order i think is the only thing that i'm going to specify in there just to make sure that it does come in in the same order i'm going to take the window list part from the other one put that in too and then you can get rid of that other the other window list option there and so now we should be able to just go through that process again the path string goes into the bio format string here um, we've just kind of spliced it in and you can add strings with the plus in the macro formats um, and then we've got that one and then it's going to duplicate and it's going to duplicate channel one it's going to save a tiff here so here again we want to do some string work on that one um, so we want to save our, I'll have an S, S string maybe I'm not sure what I called it in the other macro and we're going to take this and we actually want to get rid of that one we're gonna it's the directory is the same plus um, we want to have the same file name but with tiff instead and so if you don't remember the file um, the the function you can just use um, this auto suggest to try and re replace is, is an auto is a good assumption here and that's where it is you can also look up the string functions in the macro functions here and there's lots of things on strings string functions has a section I believe um, and so there's lots of different ways in handling strings and joining them and you know, moving them around as needed but replace is the most common one I think I'll use um, string old string and then the new string so the old is going to be we're going to replace uh, nd2 with um, dot tiff if you wanted to you could put something like underscore bright field something like that if you wanted to you know delineate if you were doing more than, more than one type and here's the string would be the actual the name of the file so it's going to be the f f list i whichever file we're looking at in that particular time and that's going to put that in there so we're going to take that save string copy that and place that in here right and so that should be uh, complete we're going to save that and we're going to run it and see if we get any bugs, see if we get any errors. So we're going to open up, we we'll give it the, the folder. In fact, let's just get rid of this and this so we can see what's going on. Um, run that one. Folder, it's going to run through, open, 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 and save. And this particular one, I forgot to put the close all option. And now it's going to fill it up that way. That's not such a great idea if you have lots and lots of big files, you're going to run out of RAM at some point. Um, and so really what we want to do is close all. The close all in the image J macros um, will work just the same as this one. And it only affects the, the image windows and not the, you know, the up, uh, extra windows. And that will close all there. And then we can go back to our macro window. We don't have to create a new one. We can just cut this and chop and paste it if we need to. So we're going to copy that one and put that into our list here and close all there. Right, and then all we need to do on top of that is the set batch mode as we showed in the other one. Let's just have a look to see in here. So set batch mode, and it's got the, the details of set batch mode there. Um, and so we can use the auto complete um, here too. And I 
believe, if I remember rightly, that you only really need to do it at the start. And only really around the things that are the four loops, for example, if you need to so set batch mode there. Um, uh, and it needs to be true for batch mode. Okay. And I don't see it change color, and that's an indication we've got the wrong type. And I changed it to a lowercase t and it went to a dark blue there in the bold. So that's something as well that the, the syntax for formatting and the highlighting will help you if you get something slightly off. Um, and let's save that. And we should be good. Let's try it again. In fact, let's just delete those. Um, and we're going to run it again. Lovely. And so that's it. Move on to move on to part two.